Hey there, Wargamers, Justin Arm Paint here, and today pff, we're going to talk about the Griffin. I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in again today for my, uh, my next talk about mechs for Alpha Strike that I like to use, some strategies, some unit cards, things of that nature. Now, I want to preface this video like I've done the rest and say that. Um, I play Alpha Strike almost exclusively. I'm not against uh, Classic, I just don't have anyone to play it with, and I, I like this for the speed and the ease with which I can get a lot of models on the table in a short period of time to be able to play. So, take anything I say here with a grain of salt, if you're a Classic player, the mechs that I like may not translate over to Classic the same way. I imagine they might have similar uses, but there may be some discrepancies. Uh, I also wanna showcase that I do have a Super Griffin here. <laughs> just because I like the Griffin and I wanted to have a different model and I think it's super neat. But uh, before we get going here, I do want to showcase uh, the couple of Griffins that I've got. So we've got two plastic little Griffin bros. Pew, 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 pew. This was one of my first plastic Battletech mechs that I painted up. And this is a more recent one. This is one of my Mercs. And then we've got the metal Griffin. I painted up for my Wolf's Dragoons. A little different, but I find them kind of adorable. Um, Got more of a nostalgia vibe, kind of anime vibe, and I just, I'm a big fan of the Griffin. So I've got three of them. I always try to field one with my Inner Sphere stuff when I can. Uh, but that brings us to uh, the variants. What variants of the Griffin do I actually play? Now, um, the reason I like the Griffin and the Shadowhawk uh, in particular is because they have a nostalgia vibe, they got a cool anime vibe, they're sweet mecha. And I feel like for their points, they're not too bad. For the Inner Sphere, they both sport TMM of a 2, which is really nice. So the first variant I like to use is the Griffin 1 in here. Now, there are two variants that I like to use. We've got the 1N and the 3M. We're going to talk about the 1N first. And it is usable from the Star League era all the way up through the Dark Ages. And I imagine it'll be still usable in the Ill Clan as well. Uh, so if you happen to go with the 1N variant, it is usable in a variety of eras. So let's jump into the stack card here. Uh, we're going to use a master unit list, and we'll look at what it's got to offer. So it's coming in at 31 points. TMM value of 2, which I mentioned before for why I like the Shadowhawk uh, as well. I like to run them together. Um, it's got a 10 move with jump jets. No weak jump jets. Standard jump. That's pretty nice. Respectively, across the board, it's short, medium, and long ranges are 1, 2, and 2. It's coming with 10 life and indirect fire one. So this particular variant's pretty lackluster in the like wow department. It's not doing a whole lot of anything crazy, but much like the Shadow Hawk, it can consistently be annoying. You can push up a flank to keep medium range, leverage your TMM value of two, so it makes you hard to hit, utilize cover, and then just throw two attack dice every turn and let your opponent deal with your bigger mechs that are mar marching into their face and deal with the light mechs that are harassing them. If they ignore the lights that you are using to hopefully flank and get behind them, and they ignore the heavies and assaults that are pushing up the midfield in favor of shooting at your griffins and your shadowhawks and your other medium range kind of sniper units, that's damage that your big, chunky, you know, smashing mo uh, monster of a mechs that you have and your light, annoying scalpel mechs aren't taking which sucks, but you know, the, your opponent has to make choices and you give them those choices and then you adapt to that. Uh, so this one having 10 life is pretty good on that front and indirect fire one. So if you find that there's a mech that managed to scurry away and you can't quite finish it off, if that one attack die might do it, you can throw that out there, which is not too bad as well because this guy only has two damage at medium range anyway. So uh, foregoing the medium range shot for a single indirect shot, not, you're not, I mean, you're losing half the damage, but it's not like you're a, an archer that would like a, 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 I don't know, attack value of six and indirect fire three. You know, I guess that's still half, but it's, it's more, I don't know, it feels worse when you have that many attack dice you're giving up for a single indirect fire shot. Uh, so that's pretty useful for him. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out the 3M variant. Now there's no real difference in the models here. I'm just picking up a different one. So we got something different to look at. Uh, we're going over to the 3M. Now this one's coming in at two points more and uh, it's got some very big differences that, that are considerable. Uh, so first and foremost, this variant is not usable in the Star League era or the Succession Wars. So this variant becomes available during the clan invasion all the way through the Dark Ages, and ostensibly it'll still be available during the clan and, or the ill clan. Uh, so be aware, if you're trying to choose between the two, if you're playing in the Succession Wars or Star League era, this variant is out, the 1N is in. But 
Let's get into the get this guy's stats. Still got the same team in value of a two. 10 jump jets, you're still able to leverage the same techniques with being able to move him, use the jump jets to make him harder to hit, to get into um, good ranges to shoot, get leverages and vantage points and things of that nature, which I may have missed that on the one in. I think I've, I missed that point. Using the jump jets, um, not only for your positioning, but also to enhance your uh, target movement modifier um, of a plus one. So uh, he's got a two raw, he jumps, now it's a three, put him in cover, it's a four. Hopefully they're shooting at you at medium range, it's a six plus whatever their, their gunnery skill is, which is probably a three or a four, so they're looking for nines and tens. Makes him pretty hard to hit. Um, getting into his damage though, this is where things get particularly different for this Griffin, and this is why it's one that I really like. So it's short, medium, long res respectively, this griffin's got a two three three so over the one in variant this one's got uh, one extra damage at short one extra at long, medium and one extra at long which is really nice and he only comes in at two points more the one in variant is 31 this one's 33 so this one can do all the same things in terms of moving up the the to the midfield getting advantage point using those jump jets when necessary and it gets to throw three damage instead of two this uh, the slight difference on the life department, however, is that the three or the one in variant had ten life, so five armor, five structure. The uh, three in variant here has five armor, three structure. So you're giving up a little bit of your internal survivability. You know, the last few points of life, you're giving that up uh, in lieu of extra damage um, and some extra special abilities. So the one in variant does have indirect fire. But this one picks up case, indirect fire one, and LRM one one one. So if you're using the uh, special ammunition rules, you can use the LRM rule as well. So you can use some of those different um, missiles, like armor piercing, I think, is one, inferno ammo, things of that nature. I haven't gotten into those yet, but it is an ability that you get. And the case is pretty helpful, so that if you do suffer a crit, um, you you get to um, um, minimize the chances that the ammo explosion would kill you. And again, the downside is, is if he's taking a crit from taking structure damage, the first point of structure he takes leaves him with two life left, so he's almost gone anyway. Um, you wouldn't want him to just go down outright, uh, but by the time he's taking raw criticals, he's almost gone, whereas the other uh, one in variant, his first structure point he takes, he's still got four life left. And this guy takes a structure point, he's got two left. Um, so something to consider. I highly favor the 3M variant over the 1N if I've got the points. Um, if I'm going for a more tanky force, I will take the 1N um, just so that that model is harder to take off the field. If, I'm, if I think I'm going to push forward um, closer to my opponent and I'm going to take more shots, I'll take the 1N variant just because it's got two more points of life. You're going from 8 life from the 3M to 10 life on the uh, 1N, which is a 25% a increase in life and two points less on the one end, but you do have less damage. So you have to kind of weigh in what you want to do. Uh, I feel like the one point of damage um, at, at sh uh, short range and long range isn't huge. Um, you probably don't want to be at short range with uh, your Griffins if you can help it. You probably don't want to be at long range, uh, especially if you're using your jump jets to modify your TMM because your um, long range shots are already going to be really hard to make. If you do want to leverage those long range shots, that 3M variant here is going to be a little bit better for you because he's got more damage over this guy, uh, but both of them are going to struggle to hit at that, that plus four modifier um, at the, the long range. So probably want to have him at medium, which means that the three dice over the two is pretty good, um, but it is only one point more damage. So you do have to kind of wait in. I like rolling the three dice, but if I'm strapped for points, uh, rolling two damage and having 25% more life over this guy is pretty helpful. So these are the two Griffins that I like to use. What do you guys like to use in your Alpha Strike games? Is there a variant that I missed? Is there a strategy I missed? Did I get something wrong? Or you just want to sound off below about things that you like with the Griffin or unit combos and stuff like that? Let me know. Let's get a conversation going. Um, now, one of the comments I had before had mentioned talking about uh, individual units being helpful is good, but talking about how they fit into different lance and star roles and uh, which ones may be uh, useful from that perspective may differ from the individual. So if you've got some thoughts on that, sound off in the comments below. I'm really eager to uh, learn more about Alpha Strike, share it with the community, get some conversations going. So if you're a veteran and you know a lot, Sound off, let me know. If you're new and you're getting an alpha strike, let's get that conversation going too. Maybe you'll see something I don't, or if you try something that I've suggested, let me know how it went for you.
As always, thank you guys so much for letting me ramble with you today. I'm enjoying my little bit of hobby therapy, being able to share Battletech with the internet. This is my way to broadcast a message out there into the darkness and hope that I connect with you guys, bring a little bit of hobby happiness into your lives, get you excited about painting and playing some Battletech, and just maybe bring in someone new. And on that note, if you are looking to get into Battletech and need some new models, anything at all, check out Fortress Miniatures and Game, sponsor of the channel here. Robert's a good guy, super awesome, helped me get some stuff when I needed it, and he, I'm sure he can help you too. If you like the paint jobs you saw, on these mechs pew 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 check out monument hobbies here i've got a link down below and a coupon code 99 percent of the models you see me here or, uh, the models you see me uh or have seen on the see on the channel or on instagram woof, stumbling uh 99 of the paints i used on those are from the pro acryl lines we got a, a discount code and a link below and if you want to help support me uh at my day job check out deathrodesigns.com we got a coupon down below as well got a variety of terrain options stencils and super popular right now are six to ten mil uh miniatures that are in perfect for battle tech we've been selling like hotcakes it's a huge part of our business right now and i'd love to share that with you got a coupon to save you some money maybe you'll like those minis and you'll get to help support what i do that being said it's time for me to sign off today folks thank you so much for hanging out with me again as always keep painting those models Keep rolling your dice, and I'll catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.